This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to find us online, exxonradio.com is where you can listen to the show, 724-365. And on the Starcom Radio Network and over 400 affiliates that are associated with a Starcom. And if you'd like to send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Donald Mazilla. He is a political and terror expert, healthcare, nationally recognized media personality and commentator, author and COO of Information Strategies, Inc. We're going to be talking this hour about ISIS strikes in Texas. As you all know, two armed suspects believed to be carrying explosive have been shot to death after opening fire on an anti-Muslim art exhibit in Dallas. The pair were gunned down after shooting a security guard in the leg outside the Curtis Cultural Center in Garland, Texas, during the controversial event where caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad were being displayed. The building and surrounding area was blocked off uh, and blocked down by SWAT team members, around 100 attendees still inside after multiple gunshots were heard. Now, did ISIS claim responsibility? They sure did. They claimed responsibility today. And this is opening up an entire new chapter in the war against terrorism. This is, in fact, the first strike by ISIS on American soil. 
Joining me now is Donald Mazzella to try and put some sense into what in the name of God is happening these days. Donald, welcome to the Exxon. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. It's my great pleasure, sir. Uh, Donald, what is going on? Like, you, you've you had your fingers on the pulse of, of what's going on, and maybe you can help us make sense of this all. For example, I see nothing wrong whatsoever about people expressing their First Amendment right to free speech. You know, there's been cartoons done of every president, every senator, every congressman, every mayor, every uh, religious philosophical character, even the Pope, even me, and probably even you, my friend, and we don't get totally pissed off. Well, uh, you hit the nail on the head on that one. Uh, uh, First off, let me uh, uh, disabuse the audience. I think when all is said and done, and according to my sources, these two fellows uh, were not... uh, uh, associated with ISIS. In their mind, they were, mm-hmm. but there's uh, strong evidence coming out that uh, they indeed were just two people that that took up the ISIS cause uh, for their own, for their own uh, uh, twisted reasons, and uh, ISIS simply uh, took advantage of it. They're very good propagandists, uh, the uh, ISIS machine, mm-hmm. and. Um, is there a threat on American soil from ISIS-inspired uh, 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 terrorists? Absolutely. Is this the first of it? And, uh, when all is said and done, I think, uh, and based on my sources and everything I've heard, uh, we're going to find that these are simply two men who uh, who felt in life uh, that they weren't treat- being treated right, um, uh, and decided to do something about it. Um, first and foremost, they wore body armor and they expected to live. Uh, that's an important point you have to keep in mind. Uh, they, they, they thought they were going to get away with it. Mm-hmm. They hadn't realized, and the Garland Police Force has got to be commended for all this. Big time. The way they set, set up the uh, perimeter, the way they... Uh, funnel traffic into uh, checkpoints, uh, and, and uh, from my sources on the ground there, say, doing a, are doing an excellent job of investigation, along with the FBI and the Arizona uh, Police Authority. Yeah, now, speaking about the FBI, federal agents for years were monitoring one of the two gunmen who were shot dead. Um, so, you know, what does it say about here? You've got the federal agency who is actually... Um, watching one of these two uh, sh- you know, shooter victims, and now all of a sudden we understand that everything was dropped. This, the surveillance was taken off of this, uh, this shooter, and bang. So this seems to be premeditated. Well, uh, clearly it was uh, premeditated in the sense that they mm-hmm. wanted to do something and they chose uh, this particular event. But... Um, uh, re- remember, they were doing intermittent uh, surveillance and, and other uh, types of uh, checking on on one of the, one of the victims. Right. But uh, you don't you don't want to have uh, a police state here in the United States. Um, and uh, asking uh, the FBI to uh, check on every mental case. Right. And let's be frank about it. I think when when it's all said and done. Done. You're going to see that this is uh, uh, there are dark interior motives. Donald, stand by, my friend. We've got to take our first break. Donald Manzella is our special guest this hour. Exo Nation will be back on the other side of this break. Don't- How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. 
Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created mnemology science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Welcome back, everyone. Don Mazella is our special guest. He is a political and terror expert, healthcare nationally recognized media personality and commentator, author and COO of Information Strategies. On Twitter, it's hashtag 2SBDigest, and his website is smallbusinessdigestmag.com. All right, Don, when we look at the events on Sunday, you know, Pam Geller is well known throughout the media for her views about Islam. Gelder, who was brought over into the United States from the Netherlands, is known as an anti-Islamic, let me see if I can use a nice word here, uh, disturber. The reason why they had the caricature contest in the center where they had their event, the Curtis Culwell Center in in Garland, was because six months prior, there was a Muslim or Islam event there. Now, I understand the the necessity for the freedom of speech. I, 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 as a journalist, and I'm sure you'll agree with me as a journalist, not, not as well as a member of of the, the best neighbor anybody can have, the great United States of America, that this is so important. However, there are cultures who have come over into Canada and the United States who do not believe that these freedoms should be as vast as they are. You see, I've got a very simple solution to this, and I'm going to ask you for yours. 
First of all, if you come over to Canada and you don't like the way we do things, go back to the country that you came from. It's that simple. If you don't like our rules, too bad. It pisses me off that we can't say Merry Christmas anymore, that we can't call it the Easter holidays anymore, that we have to be so politically correct that our rights, our freedoms, are being infringed on, stepped on, trampled on, and thrown out the window by our own governments because we're too damn politically correct. It's very simple. Where the plane lands, it takes off from. That's how I see it. I may be right. I may be wrong. But in my heart, I feel as if I'm right. What's your opinion? Well, you said it much better than I could ever say it. That uh, couldn't agree with you more. I'm the son of an immigrant. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the grandson on the other side of, of immigrants. And they came over here and they accepted. They learned English. Yep. They, they accepted our rules. Yes. And... Uh, uh, and uh, prospered here, mm-hmm. as do, uh, do many people. And uh, by the way, these uh, people that complained, um, uh, it, it's very interesting. If you go into the, uh, Muslim communities, et cetera, you, you see what happens to every uh, immigrant generation. In fact, uh, I'm uh, uh, my book is coming out in a couple of uh, months uh, growing up italian america and a changing uh, italian american in a changing america and um uh you all you have the tension between the old country and the new between the older people and the younger people and the interesting thing that's happened uh, in, in the islamic uh communities in the united states i can't speak that well for uh canada mm-hmm. um is that you're finding the the younger generation, the new generation, seems to resent um, the adherence to the old ways of the uh, parents. The parents resent that the the, the new, younger people uh, are are practicing the religion and practicing uh, their everyday lives differently. Um, usually, it happens in the third generation. There seems to be um, schisms occurring within the Islamic communities at a much more rapid p- uh, pace. Some people, some of the younger people, feel um, uh, uh, rejected by our society. Other and, and they get angry about it. Others want to embrace it, but are tugged mm-hmm. uh, back uh, to, the, to the. I use the old country uh, uh, to the old ways and. Uh, you're seeing a great deal of tension inside Islamic communities. You're seeing it less so in uh, Hispanic communities. Uh, and and the, the end result of, of all of this is that uh, we're, we're finding people who are alienated. Now, in our generation, uh, I'm 72, so mm-hmm. uh, you were responsible for what happened to you. Yeah. In these generations today, we blame other people. It's never our fault. Have you noticed that? And almost everything, it's never our fault. Now, uh, that I believe, uh, and uh, and people smarter than me have told me this, that this is what's uh, uh, causing this uh, radicalization that we're seeing in these Islamic communities. And, and as one uh, very uh, uh, close observer of this uh, put it, uh, she said, uh, it's, am- it's amazing there are so few. And uh, unfortunately, because of the way um, uh, our media is today, those few have a powerful impact on, on uh, the, wor- uh, the world's perception of them. You had that incident up there in the Parliament building. In Ottawa, that's I right. Mean, yeah, so, I mean, you're not immune to it. Mm-hmm. Certainly in England, the, oh. the, in their tolerance, the, it's been a, a nightmare for the police. Yep. And uh, the end result is uh, we we have a, um, uh, a, a boiling pot within our our. our community uh, within our countries both of our countries 
and uh, and the other key point about it is the, uh, our ability to talk to each other, uh, the internet and everything else that's happening, it has made uh, uh, made all of this uh, uh, much more diff difficult to, to a police. And, and be to reach out to these people. I, I say that because they're turning uh, inward. They're skyping uh, back to the uh, uh, to the old countries, Iraq or Iran, wherever they're they're coming to. They're sky uh, skyping. And by by the way, uh, let's be perfectly frank about it. The the National Security Agency and the other intelligence agencies they're, they're listening in, and what they're hearing is frightening them. Um, they're only hoping that uh, age will give uh, these young people a better perspective. But and, and the, uh, the other thing is, we apparently are not giving them enough, in their view, perceived opportunity. And uh, when and when they fail, or they don't get the job that they think they want, or get the the bride that they got, they thought they should get. Um, it's all start, it's all be, becoming tied up into some very very difficult knots, and that's what happened uh, down here with these two men. Uh, the, uh, the one searching go, searching for his identity. He, does, he didn't know whether he was an American or an Iraqi. He, he didn't know anything, and as a result, he uh, uh, suffered a great de deal of angst. And if uh, the first reports from the police are correct. He found the perfect foil in the, in the, the other shooter, and the two of them uh, reinforced. There's also, and I have no basis for this outside of what I've heard from two or three people, mm -hmm. there was a homosexual um, uh, element to yeah. all of this, which, um, and don't forget, uh, in Islam, homosexuality is not condoned. No, it's not. Uh, so you have all of these factors working uh, up to an explosion point, and uh, and it's being repeated across mm -hmm. the country. Um, there was a report today. The FBI says it has ongoing inv 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 investigations about all of this uh, in all 50 states similar type people and I wouldn't be surprised if Canada is not well, hearing that I, as well. I, I agree so so let me ask you this is it time we close down the borders is it time well look what happened during World War II maybe I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers when I say this but too damn bad the truth is the truth during World War II after the Japanese uh, bombed Pearl Harbor we had internment camps and yes. yet here it is, 3,000 people plus killed in one attack on New York City. We had the attack on the Pentagon. You know, we, we've had terrorist attacks. We had the, the, uh, the Boston Marathon bombing now in Texas. What will it take before everybody opens their bloody eyes and understands we are at war? It's going to take two or three more incidents. Don't forget, uh, just look at the beheadings. Yeah. Uh, it started with one, two, then burning alive that pilot. Um, uh, you know, there's a great line from the play Tiger at the Gate. A man's great ability is to uh, view. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the play is about Hector's efforts to avoid the Trojan War. Right. Hector's uh, Ulysses. Yeah. And, and there's one wonderful scene where Hector turns... Uh, to Ulysses and says, well, what do we do? And Ulysses says, man's great uh, gift is that they can view tra a tragedy from the terrace. Uh, unless it really hits home uh, in some horrific way, uh, the, the American people, I think they're waking, waking up to it. But again, the other problem is mm -hmm. the cycle. A week from today, we will not be talking about this. Hopefully. We'll have the Hopefully we won't. But we've got to get ready to go for the news, Donald. Please stand by. But I'd like to leave you and the Exo Nation with this following quote. And this was uh, from ISIS today. This is a quote. We say to the defenders of the cross, 
to the U.S. that future attacks are going to be harsher and worse. The Islamic State soldiers will inflict harm on you with the grace of God. The future is just around the corner. Wake up. Take it seriously. It's not going to get better unless we start putting our foot down and saying enough is enough. We need people in power who are not too politically correct. We need people in power who are going to say, you know what, we're not going to let you guys in. You can't get along in your own country. How in the hell are you going to get along in our country? We have to put a stop to it. That's just my opinion. I'd like to hear from you, Exxon, at exxonradiotv.com. Donald Manzella and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. Whatever you do, don't go away. We'll be right back. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV Show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV Show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The X-Zone TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D O W S E R S dot com or call 1 877 Dowsing. That's 1 877 369 7464. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag, Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Donald Mazella is our special guest this hour. 
on Twitter, hashtag 2SB Digest. And his website is small business, uh, small business digest magazine.com. And uh, Don is joining us from New Jersey tonight. Don, you and I were talking uh, during the news break, and I said to you, I believe that the next attack that we're being warned about is going to make 9 11 look like a walk through the park. I agree. It'll, no, it'll be a series uh, you, you're, uh, leading up to, to the major event, something that kills t- uh, 10, 20,000 people, mm-hmm. e- uh, even a small th- uh, nuclear device. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, or uh, putting a toxin in, in a subway station. Um, so, but what you're going to see uh, over time is uh, testing, testing us and uh, small minor incidents. Minor, they're not minor to the people that are involved, but uh, uh, but you you will see that leading up to it. Uh, probably during the 2016 presidential campaign is the best guess of uh, um, uh, of uh, most intelligence people. Don't, uh, and uh, don't forget, mm-hmm. uh, ISIS has had pretty much a run of the place uh, under the current president. He has simply not stood up to them. He has, he has not uh, inflict, inflicted harm into them. Uh, I, uh, I thought it was interesting and significant today that the Joint Chiefs of Staff here uh, is now going to be run by, by the Marine Commandant, uh, which hasn't happened in a while. And uh, the Marines and the paratroopers bear most of the brunt of uh, whatever is going to happen. So, uh, uh, but ISIS will put it on the uh, um, on the uh, put something on the ground soon. But don't forget, ISIS is, and and the other terrorist groups are suffering now because uh, the the drop in oil prices has uh, severely affect, affected their cash flow. Mm-hmm. And uh, why is Iran so desperate to, uh, to have the sanctions li- lifted? Because there's an l- awful lot of stuff that's needed that right now they can't supply to their uh, uh, proxies in, in, in the Middle East. Uh, 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 the oil embargo has hurt. The oil price drop has, has hurt. But uh, and the only way uh, ISIS and the, their other masters can... Uh, 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 prove themselves. Uh, prove themselves is uh, by by doing some terrorist acts. Uh, it took them 24 hours, almost 48 hours, to claim responsibility, um, and they had to make sure the two men were dead before saying that. Um, so you, you're right on. You're right on it. But can I go back to the immigrant question? For just one minute, sure, and point please. out that both Canada and the United States is, are really made up of immigrants. Mm-hmm. We've now, lately, discovered that the Indians are all, uh, the native quote Native Americans are immigrants just as much as we are. Yeah, but um, which I kind of think is funny if you uh, <laughs> think about it. Um, uh, but, but having said all that, and, and as I say, being the son of, of an immigrant. We have uh, grown as a nation because of our immigrants. Um, Alexander Hamilton, uh, one of our great statesmen, was an immigrant. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the real um, solution is to control the influx. We we have to do something about the uh, our southern border. You know, uh, lost in all of the hubbub is the fact that the longest undefended border in the world is between Canada and the United States. And, you know, people sometimes forget that. And we've been able to live, uh, well, now almost 200, 250 years mm-hmm. side by side. Yeah. And and we cross-pollinate. Um, and we welcome Canadians. Um, uh, but if we turn off that spigot, Immigrants are, by nature, the most um, 
uh, adventurous and often the, the most intelligent from uh, from the, from the immigrating country uh, that to, to pick up the roots and leave. But now it's far less uh, uh, affected by it because we now have Skype and all of the others. And uh, uh, my cousin married a Ukrainian immigrant, and she see, talks to her daughters and granddaughters every day. She hasn't left um, uh, the Ukraine as, as much uh, as we did um, across uh, mm -hmm. when we came here origi uh, originally back then. Uh, and I, I just, if I may say one story, my father comes from an island near the island of Capri. And when I offered to take him back in his last years, he said no, because uh, they had changed and he had changed. And the great thing about America uh, was that we changed our immigrants into Americans. And what uh, I myself am totally against having two languages, Spanish and English, um, uh, simply because my father had to learn uh, English, and he did. Mm -hmm. And in learning it, he became more American than Italian. And that, to me, is, is an important point. And unfortunately, in the Islamic uh, areas, um, uh, that is not occurring. In my town, um, we are now 51% Korean. We actually had to pass an ordinance uh, so uh, requiring a sign in English uh, so that firefighters knew what kind of a store it was. My heavens. Because the, and it's a true story. We had to do it. I believe it. Um, and, um, and, and it's very interesting. Um, I'll, I'll point one other thing out. Um, uh, immigrant groups adopt uh, American uh, uh, customs much more fiercely. Uh, in, my, in my town, Palisades Park, we have one of the most vociferous Halloween uh, celebration. Uh, the kids go up and down. Uh, you go to uh, more settled towns, Ridgewood, etc. The kids aren't on the street anymore. They, you know, get, collecting candy. Hmm. How come? It's a. It's. It, you know, well, for one thing, people are afraid. Yeah. Uh, I can. I can remember uh, when I was a kid. You could go out. You could go. You, you, if you were ten or eleven, you went by yourself. Till some uh, idiot put. Uh, Razor blades inside Apple. Oh gosh, yeah, I remember those days. The world has the world has changed. It has changed. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. Uh, uh, we certainly have a lot more uh, things. But the, but the other Frederick Brown in in 1960 wrote a book, uh, a short story about a man who took a walk in his neighborhood, and the police came by and said. Um, Go back in the house and watch TV. What a prophetic uh, short story it was, because to, does anybody sit out on the porch anymore? Do, uh, uh, Maynard, uh, Maynard Jackson, uh, the, black, the first black mayor of uh, Atlanta, he, he lamented uh, uh, the fact that when he was a kid, uh, the, uh, the mothers in the neighborhood were all out there, and if he did something wrong, they told his, his parents. Yeah. T today, uh, if you tell the parents, they're more likely to get mad at you rather than the child. That's, that's uh, right. The world has changed. And in the Islamic communities, I'm told, I, I've not done that much of research, but uh, uh, there is a project going on that uh, I kind of keep in touch with. That you you have tensions uh, growing uh, that are different than other immigrant uh, groups because they're trying to stay together, they're trying to uh, maintain the language, they're try they're they're uh, they're even in some cases as in England uh, conducting their own courts and their own um, uh, policing. Uh, which uh, the English discovered was a, a great mistake on our part, and, and France, too. Uh, by the way, the French have a worse problem than we do, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and they're doing everything. 
they can to uh, alleviate it. But to, I've been going on and on, but to get back to the original point, there's no question. Something is going to happen. And the big thing probably will happen during the 2016 presidential campaign. Uh, and, and that is uh, when the, the country r- will really wake up. Who do you think is in their present presidential race going into 2016 that, in your opinion, as an American and as a journalist, would be best equipped to handle such a disaster? That's a darn good question I ask myself when I sit down to write a column or something. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, uh, first off, he, he or she needs to have a mandate to do it. Um, I, I, I believe uh, that they ha- have to go to the American people and say, political correctness be darned, we must go and, and clean up these messes. Yeah. We must go into our schools. And uh, if you read, a, um, I haven't read a Canadian one in quite a while, but you read a, American textbooks, and you, you try to figure out which country you're in. Um, but the point is, we need, we need to teach our young people the, the, old, the old values. My country, um, uh, you, know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, love of family, love of country, uh, love of doing neighbor. You know, uh, the, Canadi- the Canadians and Americans are unique in, uh, in one thing. We go to war, we win it, and we go home. Yes, you know, you know, uh, as uh, Adam, uh, as uh, G- General Powell said, all we ask for is a little uh, piece of earth so we could bury our dead. You know, um, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, right now, uh, to get back to your point, uh, Huxab- uh, got the former Alabama governor Huxtable announced today. Uh, Carly Simon, uh, uh, Carly Farini, Farino uh, announced. But right now, no one uh, in the Republican Party um, has really staked out that that ground. They're afraid to because they they have to go to the center in order to win. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, by the way, uh, I've been predicting. I do not believe Hillary Clinton will be the nominee of the. Uh, Democratic Party, um, despite what the Wall Street Journal is going to say in tomorrow's uh, edition. Well, the Wall Street Journal's that, been wrong before. Uh, uh, and the New York Times, but they'll mm-hmm. never admit it. Uh, but uh, the, the real point about it is um, no one is, is taking that ground. Uh, and uh, until someone does, we can't really deal with the problem. If there's an incident, uh, a significant incident, then we're going to to um, then we're we're going to see uh, maybe some changes made. I, I'm on a, a regular show every Tuesday at five o'clock with a man who kept telling me, uh, a very smart man, that President Obama has never called ISIS a terrorist organization, and I kept the uh, the um, arguing but he has and the answer is he hasn't and till he does and i don't think he ever will how can you rally the american people and warn them about it um if if the president won't say it Mm -hmm. who else is going to say it why why won't he say it i have no idea the man perplexes me no end um uh, you know, the, he, he came in on a, a platform that will bring us, bring us together, and he has been probably the most, on race relations, the most divisive American president we've had in a long time. In fact, I can't think of any other. Um, uh, uh, he, uh, I mean, his handling of Ferguson, his handling of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. What's the answer? Let's spend more money. Um, they put a billion and a half, uh, $1.8 billion dollars, yeah. uh, 
and, and still, uh, he, he's put more regulations in. If you're a small business today, you should, it's very difficult to be in business. Yeah. Um, uh, I just got a new book across my desk from a, a, a man who's been in business for 20 years. And it's a very fascinating book because he, he talks about his, he's, he, he's very uh, frank about his ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And he, he makes furniture in Philadelphia, custom furniture. And uh, he said uh, he can't even get the woods he needs anymore because of the reg regulations. Well, in my opinion, once again, knock off the, uh, the, the outsourcing to other countries. Keep the jobs in Canada. Keep the jobs in the United States. Get the people back to work. Give them their pride and dignity back. Who needs something that says made in China? I'd rather see something made in the USA and made in Canada. We don't need to outsource. It's, it's, it's one of the stupidest things we have ever done. Take care of the people within your own country first. And once you've successfully done that, then then you can help other people. Stand by, Donald. You and I have to take our final break for this segment. Exonation. Nation, Donald Mazzilla is our special guest to this hour. His website, www.smallbusinessdigestmag.com. And you can follow Donald on Twitter. Uh, his hashtag is 2B, I'm sorry, 2SB Digest. That's 2, the number 2, SB Digest. We'll be back on the other side of this. What if someone told you you could live to be 120? Would you believe him? What if he told you the Bible guaranteed it? All you needed to do was follow his rules and buy his products. Would you do it? What if you invested 20 years of your life in him? What if he tested his substances on your child? What if your child became brain damaged as a result? Meet Dr. Tyler Belknap, a fast-talking Texas ad man turned health guru. At the helm of a vast health food and supplement empire, he has established himself as the authority on nutrition and longevity. But what his followers don't know is that his products are laced with bizarre psychoactive substances from genetically modified plants developed in his very own secret lab. No wonder his customers can't stop using them. Tyler Belknap will stop at nothing to keep his edge in the market even if it means experimenting on children. Chasing 120, a story of food, faith, fraud, and the pursuit of longevity, a novel from the pen of political cartoonist Monty Wolverton, is an easy and entertaining read full of rich characters and intrigue. It hits home in a world filled with all kind of hucksterism and offers a glimpse of what can happen when GMO technology falls into the wrong hands. Chasing 120 by Monty Wolverton. Get your copy today at www.ptm.org forward slash 120 or on Amazon.com. When demystified, shamanism is an ancient science delving into the quantum level of life. Understanding and implementing basic shamanic principles can empower the individual to heal, manifest, and evolve in these rapidly changing times. Path Home Shamanic Art School is a one-of-a-kind Colorado State certified occupational school training and certifying shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also train individuals simply interested in empowering and enriching their lives through shamanism. Path Home's certification classes are in a week-long block format, enabling national and international students to participate. We also provide online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions as well. Discover all you can be. Enter the limitless world of shamanism today. For more information, visit findyourpathhome.com or call 303-775-3431. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. 
Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back, everyone. Our guest this hour is Donald Mazzella. He is a political and terror expert, healthcare nationally recognized media personality and commentator, author and COO of Information Strategies, Inc. Now, his website is www.smallbusinessdigestmag.com. And you can follow Donald on Twitter. His, fa- his uh, Twitter address is hashtag the number 2 SB Digest. Donald, as I told you during the last break, it's been a great pleasure having you on the show. We need, and you and I as members of the media, need to raise the alarm. Because in today's political correctness arena, not only in Canada but the United States, the truth at times isn't isn't where it should be, front and center. We need stronger leadership. We need people who will say enough is enough. I, for one, want to see the Bible back in schools. I, for one, want to say Merry Christmas. I, for one, want to say Happy Easter. I, for one, want to be able to practice and and follow any religious philosophy I want to. I want to respect others who want to have the same respect. But respect, like communication, is a two-way street. So thank you for all your do for all you do, Donald. Now you've got a little bit of a, a story to tell us of what happened after World War II. Well, basically, uh, we were on the subject of uh, outsourcing our jobs mm-hmm. when Japan uh, had its resurgence after World War II. They stamped all of their exports made in the U in the USA because uh, for most of the last century. The paradigm for quality uh, was made in the USA. We can't say that today, uh, and it, it's a really a turnaround. And you say you want to keep the jobs here. You're absolutely right. Uh, we should. Um, unfortunately, uh, we've, we've become a service economy and one where we ex- – uh, the biggest thing we export are airplanes, if, if you really uh, look at it, it's the single biggest category. So, uh, and uh, hopefully we will start exporting oil because that will destroy uh, exactly. Iran and ISIS. Um, but we have to wait for that. Yeah, until it's too late. Um, what's up next for you? You were telling us a little bit about a book you've got coming about uh, coming out shortly. Can you tell us about it? Well, I'd love to. Uh, I'm waiting for my publisher. The title is, Frankie, If You Get Hurt, I'll Kill You. And it's a growing up Italian-American uh, in a changing uh, America. Because um, uh, we, as Italian-Americans, have evolved um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, from, the, from the early part of the last century. I was born in the middle of World War II, and uh, uh, we're part of the... Uh, uh, the quiet generation that, that went to school, uh, grammar school and high school, up to 1960. I graduated in 19, 1960, and we were a different. We were a different, and all of the things uh, that well, we used to have band concerts in the, in the park. Oh, sure, I remember. Um, that, you, you remember? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, at, uh, uh, and we used to have dinner as a family. Mm-hmm. Uh, the worst thing that ever happened were, to, uh, if you remember, TV trade tables. Oh my gosh! Where yeah. you gathered, uh, where you gathered around, all of the things uh, that uh, have changed. But the the major change is that the family is no longer the focus. It is really amazing. Um, I was on assignment out in 
uh, Reno, Nevada, at a, a extended stay hotel. Donald, I hate to do and, this, but we, we've run out of time for tonight. Uh, We're going to have you good. back on in the future, my friend. Thank you so much for being there. And Exo Nation, my guest this hour has been da- uh, Donald Mazella, and we'll be back on the other side of this news break. Don't go away.